2009. We've just about exited the awkward transition from the 90s to the early 2000s. Everyone's crying over a dead Michael Jackson. The Grindr rap releases worldwide. Uh, um, not that I would know. I, I was a prepubescent little rap scallion of an eight-year-old. I felt gay. I felt that no, uh, th like that just based on what they told me. Kanye West is a jealous little man and so decides to sabotage Taylor Swift's VMA acceptance speech. I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. The Xbox 360 was four years old, the PS3 was three years old and in full new gen swing. The original Xbox was enormous and slightly malevolent. I saw the way it was menacing those Japanese gamers. <laughs> Bro, what? You can't say that. 2009 was another time, man. With releases such as Borderlands, Halo Wars, Batman Arkham Asylum, 50 Cent Blood on the Sat... Uh, um, okay, okay, maybe not that one. Sorry, Curtis James Jackson the third. 2009 was also a great year for video games, but it doesn't end there. Emerging like a phoenix out of the ashes of the cold November breeze was Assassin's Creed 2. A game ripe with personality, intrigue, politics. Hang on a minute, guys, I'm, I'm receiving some intel. S stop talking about Assassin's Creed 2. This video is about another game. How dare I divert from the script? You pay me to talk about games, not gay dating apps. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, okay. Uh Sorry about the interruption, guys. I've been told this video isn't about one of the most popular games in the Assassin's Creed series. We're instead going to be talking about its often forgotten about slightly special younger brother. And that game is Assassin's Creed Bloodlines for the PSP. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry too. Assassin's Creed Bloodlines released for the PlayStation Portable the same day as AC2. Unlike the all new adventure with our Italian fuckboy Ezio. May I come in? Fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. Well, wait. <laughs> Came out wrong. Bloodlines acts as a direct sequel to the first Assassin's Creed game. You experience the story of Altair ibn Ahad right after he defeats Al Mualim and takes up the unofficial mantle of Grand Master of the Assassin Brotherhood. Altair ventures west to Cyprus in pursuit of the Templars in order to discover why they are taking such an interest in the island. Now, I don't want to be too harsh on this game, taking into account that the hardware was about as limited as you could get when attempting to create something reminiscent of the original. I will, however, present this game truly as it is, be it the game's best attributes as well as, I wouldn't go as far as to say faults, let's go with quirks. At its heart, Bloodlines is very much an Assassin's Creed game. You play as an assassin fighting Templars, you climb buildings, you ponder the mystery of the ones who came before, you basically do Assassin's Creedy stuff. I think story-wise, Gryptonite Games did a great job. Oh yeah, AC Bloodlines was developed by a third-party company and published by Ubisoft. The very same developer that brought us other games such as Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery for the DS and later iOS, and Bejeweled Twist. God, I love Bejeweled Twist. Graphically, Bloodlines is, well, it's shit. In today's standards, handheld games look almost as good as they do on consoles, and with the release of the Steam Deck in 2022, the gap between graphical fidelity on handheld and console is getting ever closer to becoming indistinguishable. That being said, the early 2000s was a completely different case. The PSP's hardware was a slightly lower spec to what we got with the PS2, but by now with the PS3 and 360 having been out for some time, people were used to the shiny detail on their brand new 720p TV screen. So yes, Bloodlines graphics are bad, but I think the fact that they were able to take all the best aspects of a current gen game and essentially turn it into last gen is somewhat of an accomplishment in itself. As you explore the two playable regions of Cyprus, Limassol and Kyrenia, by the way, I love the difference in aesthetic between the two locations, one being Middle Eastern inspired and the other more Greek. You spend what I'd imagine is about a third of the game running between areas of the map to get to your next mission or memory. 
Again, I'm trying to remind myself that this is a very limited PSP game from 2009, but I found when playing that I would very quickly lose interest and get bored going from one area to the other until I actually reach my new mission, where I would once again be engaged with the intriguing storyline and characters. Don't get me wrong, there are viewpoints to climb, side activities to partake in, very similar to AC1. But after you've done it once, you've pretty much done it all, if you catch my meaning. There are only about 5 or 10 viewpoints in the game, which is cool. There are collectible Templar coins that are used as skill points to spend on upgrades. Again, very cool man, but I found that I could get through the game pretty easily without upgrades. So, as I said, I would end up just running from one main mission to the other. Talking of main missions in Bloodlines, they were simple but fun, cohesive, and did a good job at moving the story along steadily. The game is around 6 hours long by the way. It's crazy to think that Assassin's Creed Revelations, in my opinion the best game in the series, took inspiration from a spin-off handheld exclusive. I'll just put these two scenes side by side for you for a minute. It's function and purpose, but I can say with certainty that its origins are not divine. <sighs> Because I have been careless. Because the Templars know about Sophia and they are looking for her. Yep, that's right. I think that just goes to show how well thought out the writing of Bloodlines actually is. After each memory block, Altair sits to ponder the Apple of Eden while writing memoirs on his philosophical back and forth with the artifact. Although the main plot of the game doesn't specifically involve the Apple, these small segments are present to remind the player of Altair's overall goal in not just this adventure, but for the foreseeable future, as well as to reflect why he does and says the things he does throughout his interactions with the Templars on Cyprus. Not to mention that contemplation of the Apple shows a contrast between the Assassin's responsibility when it comes to knowledge as opposed to the Templar's thirst for dominance throughout the game. Ugh, <sighs> that was deep. Okay, back to gameplay. All aspects of gameplay are the same as they were in the first Assassin's Creed. You have your control HUD layout in the top right of the screen which changes based on low or high profile. You can free run, fight and move just like the first game. Combat is actually expanded on from AC1, with the addition of dodge rolling and ledge assassinations being the most notable. But... parkour. Parkour works in the same way as you would expect, with the same controls, however, it just doesn't work as well as AC1. Again, it makes sense looking at the limitations of the game's engine as well as hardware, I get it. I just found myself jumping in the wrong direction, or falling often. To be honest, I think the fact that the camera being utilised by X, square, circle and triangle due to there being no right thumbstick on the PSP lends to why free running was so clumsy too. With all that being said, the original parkour system is very much here. Back ejecting, side ejecting, I mean, it's practically still a million times better than Odyssey's parkour. I jest, I jest, haha, <laughs> but... Do I really? One major aspect of Bloodlines that I don't think would have worked at all in the original Assassin's Creed game is boss fights. Here, it really complements this humble little side piece of a game. Side piece? Yo, what are you saying? I got my main right here, AC1. But when I'm feeling a little bit, mm, I'll move over to my side piece, AC Bloodlines. Mm, mm. Don't get me wrong. Every boss fight in Bloodlines is easy. Each boss has its own unique fighting technique to memorize, but there's no real challenge. Dodge slash dodge slash. Oh, look, I did it. There was one witch shaman type boss that I did find very difficult. Oh, you're a little bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> Looks hard, right? Yeah, but uh, it really wasn't. My dumbass forgot I could even parry attacks by holding the right trigger. Once I'd realized that, it didn't take me more than two minutes to beat the boss. Which is quite amusing after seeing me so irate. The bosses could have been more of a challenge, I think. But overall, these boss fights paced each sequence of the game nicely and felt very creative. And to be honest, maybe the bosses were hard to beat, but I'm just that good at video games. Oh my god, you know what I'm gonna do? I need to save, save it here real quick. Bruh. Oh, I loaded it! Oh, for fuck's sake, click load. Oh, mate, oh, for fuck's sake, bro. Oh, my fucking god. If you are enamored by the nostalgia of days past and have a love for the Assassin's Creed series, then would I recommend this game? I mean, sure, why not? It's a fun little playthrough when you're bored. Do I think that AC Bloodlines is detrimental to the lore and story of the series, and if you skip this game, you're not doing the series justice? No, no, not at all, mate. I deliberately left out story spoilers in this video so that if any of you feel like jumping into the game, you can. 
If you're interested in playing but don't own a trusty PSP, do not fret my friends. If you own a PC or Android device, you can play Bloodlines through the PPSSPP emulator. It's a funny name, isn't it? I will say though, if you are to do this, legally you should buy a physical copy of any game you play through the emulator. This way you own the game and are contributing to the developers. So, Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. Yeah, I liked it. Never playing it again though.